Alright, hello, I'm your friendly neighborhood Zach Morris and this is the first episode of the Zach Morris Cooking Show. Today on, on our show we're going to be making a bowl of spaghetti. Now if you're unfamiliar with, with a bowl of, of spaghetti, it kind of looks like, like this. So this bottom part represents the bowl um, and this top part represents the noodles. This is kind of what it looks like. but. Given that art is, is somewhat subjective, you could also turn it upside down and this, the stringy part could be the bowl and the bowl could be the spaghetti. Bring your tools along, you can, you can make the spaghetti with me. And uh, if you don't have a bowl per se, uh, you could have uh, some sort of other china ware. Uh, we have a plate. Now this is, this, is, this is what a plate looks like from like a bird's eye view. If you were a bird, you were, you were scavenging for, for worms and other small insects that you could feed to your nest babies. Um, this, is, this is what a plate would look like. I'm gonna introduce you to our tools. The first of our tools is the spoon. This could be used for many things like taking precise measurements of condiments or spooning out somebody's eyeball or something like that. Now we have the knife. This is used for tenderizing meats. You kind of pound, you pound it with, with the knife and it really makes the meat very soft. Um, this is the, the fork and you use this to, to cut the meat. Now, usually most forks have four prongs, but this one has three. And that's so you can get more spaghetti per prong. Kind of the ratio is insane. I recommend getting one of these bad boys, the three pronged fork at maybe your local Ace Hardware. All right, and the next tool in our toolbox is the pipe wrench. Now this is a very important tool. Let's say you were eating my spaghetti and you had explosive diarrhea and you clogged your toilet. You could use this bad boy to, you know, like fix it. Like, that's what you do. It's just a very important tool. I would recommend it for any aspiring chef or cook. Our next tool is the hammer. Now the hammer is a very interesting tool. Um, I think it's very symbolic as humans as a species. Right here is mental stability. The right side is, as you know, evil, because you know, sharp. You could, if you were like a, a husband, this a wife, but this part right here, the, the flat part, the, the blunt part, um, that, that, that's the good, okay? The good of people, and you need both to survive, okay? See, it, it's perfectly balanced. Now, one of the most important parts of the cooking process is the spicery. Now, there are many different spices that I own. Uh, the most important being cinnamon. Um, the second most important being cinnamon sticks. And um, I'm gonna use a, a, a whole bevy of these spices to really uh, make the taste of my spaghetti pop. All right, now it's time to get the raw resources that we need to make these spaghetti noodles. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck, you know? I don't wanna have to do this for the camera, but you know, the money, you know? I'm just gonna do it, and I... For fuck's sake, I don't even think, I don't even, I don't even think we, we have spaghetti. Fuck. Didn't buy spaghetti for the spaghetti show. Fuck my life. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go buy some spaghetti. Fuck it. Look at this kid, man. I think we need to pick this pick this boy up. I think we need a companion. Shit. Get in! Get in! Get in! What? Get in! You wanna be part of a cooking show? What's a cooking show? Get in! Be gone, truck. Oh. Thank you. Jesus. That's that that's a that's a fail. I don't know what I'm saying. We gotta get him to sign the contract before we feature that. <laughs> we're we're buying spaghetti at a gas Spike the spaghetti with certain medications. And <laughs> we could we can mix brownie stuff in it. You can do it! She can do it, man. The good stuff too. Cream creamette. Do we need sauce? 
need all of them. You know, this this is these are good spaghetti noodles, but I think we might need to go somewhere more classy like like Super America. Hello. Hello. I forgot my Hey, uh, you have to pay for it, Janderson. <laughs> you just found me on the side I, of the road. I forgot my wallet in the car. How much? Fine. Two or nine. <laughs> you never saw that. So there, there, there's some, there's a substantial amount of theory behind spaghetti, and um, I, I I aim to do my best to simplify it for my audience. So um, first of all, you you get your 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 china of choice. So we got a bowl, we got a plate, and we already went over this. Um, this is what a plate would look like. This is this is more of like an oval, right there. See the oval? An oval would probably be like a bird is coming in. So like we, we're gonna think of we're also gonna use some Pythagorean theorem. So this is this this is the plate. This is this is the bird. The X marks the spot right there is, is the bird. And um, this is what the, this, this oval right here is what the plate would look like for that bird coming on to the plate. So you could have a plate or you could have a bowl. After you have one of these two things, you, you, you need your spaghetti noodles. Now, unfortunately for us, we had to make a pit stop to go grab um, some spaghetti. But now that we have our spaghetti, we can accurately make spaghetti. Take your bowl or your plate and you place the noodles in the bowl. Now you need some sort of heat, so, so what I use to heat my spaghetti is is the radiator of your car. Like here's the hood of your car right here, there's, okay, there, there's the hood right there. I would heat the spaghetti over the radiator of the car and that would make sure the, the, the noodles get all like, this is the noodle before and then that's the noodle after. Another way to do it is you put it over a heat lamp like that over there. Maybe you just breathe on it really hard, like this is the bowl right here, and you're like, oh, oh, oh. and the, the noodles will eventually get soft. Spaghetti sauce is the most important part because it's what transforms your, your vanilla noodles into um, Italian goodness. You take the spaghetti sauce, this is the bowl right here, or the bottle of spaghetti sauce, and you pour it onto your bowl of spaghetti. And this is, uh, uh, of course, after the whole softening process. Yeah, so then you'll have yourself a nice bowl of spaghetti. So first of all, I'm going to give you guys an exclusive sneak peek into the hardware that I'm going to be using to enviscerate the spaghetti. Um, for the for the sake of the Zach Morris cooking show and legalities and whatnot, we are not going to be using um, my car radiator to uh, cook the spaghetti. We're going to be using a much more FDA approved method of cooking my spaghetti. Right here is what I call the little bear um, pot. Okay, now if you had let's say this much, this much right here, like this imaginary um, unit of measurement in my hands right now, if you had this much. Um, I would place it in a bowl like, not like this, probably like this, because you know, this is a lot. It might get to the top, but since we're going to be using various spices and whatnot, I would recommend Big Boy. Now this guy is great. This is what some people call a faucet, okay? You open this and literally um, human life force comes spewing out. You place it in the set pan because it sort of acts like a spaghetti lube, if you will. Um, it kind of softens up the spaghetti. It can hurt less for the spaghetti because we all know who it is. Now it's time to start cooking the spaghetti. The first step of the spaghetti is the spaghetti. Now, we used cremet because we only take uh, the high quality, um, dank, if you will, brands of spaghetti. You might notice right now that it is um, the shape is a rectangular prism, and that works best for storing spaghetti because they are just strips of, of things. I don't know what they're made of. We're gonna get our top scientists on it to figure out what the spaghetti is made of. But for now, we're just gonna enjoy it in our mouths. All right, so the first uh, process of actually processing our raw resources here is we need to accurately uh, measure the size of our noodles. Now, right now it says that 
Our spaghetti noodles here are at about 11 inches. We want it to be at nine because I like the number nine. It's divisible by three. I like the, the number three. It's very divisible, okay? And I just love how divisible three is. Do this real quick. Nine. Okay, we're gonna guesstimate is right here. Now we're gonna take our spaghetti cutter and we're gonna we're gonna start sawing through the spaghetti. Now it might take a little um, muscle, if you will, because spaghetti is widely known as some of the hardest material on earth. Once you get through it, once you get through it. It is going to be the tastiest thing you've ever put in your mouth. Nine inches is the perfect taste. Okay, I love nine inches. We're going to need to go bigger. We've upgraded our tool set here. We're going to use um, the classic hacksaw. The, the Minnesota timber lumberjack people in the 1800s used to use these to cut the pelts off of raccoons. You can see the, the raccoon rust on the side here. All this is the remains of raccoon. I think that I like the taste of raccoon and I want that in my spaghetti so I'm not going to clean it off. So here we, here we go. Ah. I only like the clean cuts. See? This is like the umbilical cord of the spaghetti. We don't need this. It is, it is completely unnecessary. So the next part of our um, spaghetti project is we're gonna place our spaghetti inside the big boy. Right now, we're gonna turn on the oven. We're gonna put it down to um, eight right now. And you know what? We're not just gonna, we're not just gonna boil this water. We're gonna, we're gonna incinerate this water. So we're gonna put it up to high, okay? And the next part is to put the actual spaghetti inside the bowl of water. Once it gets hot enough, um, it'll melt the cardboard. It'll kind of mesh into the spaghetti and you'll get that nice um, old fashioned taste. This is how the pioneers used to do it, so I, I feel more patriotic doing it this way. So I understand that this might be seen as an unethical way to cook spaghetti. I'm pretty sure that the way that I'm cooking this spaghetti is probably considered a war crime. But I think that the end product will will really turn you guys around. You guys will really, you'll, you'll see that what I'm doing is intentional. And I think that it'll make the spaghetti better. So we're going to be using several things to spice up our spaghetti. Um, we're going to be using mustard, cinnamon, and poppy seed. Now, I will elaborate on why I picked these. I, I, I usually get mustard on my sub sandwiches. They have it in liquid form. I don't like liquid mustard. I, I like the dust form. Cinnamon, because I like hot tamales. I'd love it if I could have a mustard hot tamale spaghetti. It's part of the Morse family recipe. They did this in ancient Italy. My, my ancestor was actually Marco Polo, and on his way on the Silk Road, he used to make hot tamale cinnamon spaghetti and he'd feed it to the Chinese people and they'd give them safe passage and he'd bring all the silk back. So indirectly my blood is responsible for all of Europe's luxury. And we'll also be talking about poppy seeds and poppy seeds is basically pepper on crack. Opiates inside the poppy seed. Just think about that. The hot tamale cinnamon heroin spaghetti. So the next step is to start portioning off our um, spices. So we're going to use um, the spoon, and I discussed this earlier, but it's a great tool for measuring certain things. Now right here, this, this will get you $10,000 in Mexico. I'll do a second one because we're not wussing out on this, okay? And now we're going for the mustard. Now, the mustard is a little harder because it's yellow, and I don't like the color yellow. So. I don't want it to touch me. I don't like the color yellow touching me. Oh, that's just, it's so packed to, oh yeah. Okay, so I'll put that there. We'll do the second one. We got our, our mustard, our poppy seeds, and now we're just gonna do it straight from the bottle, from the cinnamon, because the cinnamon's the most important part. It's what the, the Chinese warlords liked best about Marco Polo's spaghetti, and I think that I can tame my own Chinese warlord with this. Oh, 
All right, dumping it in. Now I use the banana to stir my spaghetti for various reasons. The first reason is that it's yellow, and I love the color yellow. The second one is that it, it really enriches the spaghetti with potassium. Potassium is something that everyone needs. And here we go. We're doing it. All right, and this is the last best part about the banana stir is that you have a great snack afterwards, you know? The noodles are done, and now it's time for the best part, the straining. Ah! Ah! That's hot. That, that's hot. That, that's really hot. So upon closer inspection, I see that there's a, a few straggling hairs in here, but I think only a man doesn't eat the hairs, and I, I refuse to wear a hairnet, because hairnets are for pussies. So we're gonna pour this in here. This is gonna be the final uh, sarcophagus of our spaghetti. With this, we're gonna start the stirring process. All right, next we're gonna stir this up with the weed whipper. Um, I think that'll get the proper amount of, uh, of softness into there and it'll mix uh, the sauce in very nicely. So uh, here we go. Yeah. That looks like a finished product right there. All right, and now it's the sampling period. So um, here we go. That's some good spaghetti.